Well, it's going to be kind of a hodgepodge bunch of issues today. One, two, three, four, five things from royals to politics to um, jail. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Yeah, I just thought I'd take some stuff out of the news, and one of the things I want to do a reading on is King Charles the Third coronation. Being the same day as Archie's birthday, what's that about? And then um, for Donald Trump, the January 6th committee and the subpoena. So we can look into that. Uh, then you got uh, England to Prime Minister Liz Truss. Awkward missteps. And what about Charles's, um, what did he say? He had, I guess she had to meet him again and shake hands and be blessed and you know, whatever they do. And uh, he's like, oh, you're back. Oh, dear. <laughs> there is that. In the U.S., if you watch, I don't know, local politics, uh, there's, uh, I, oh, I forgot where is Dr. Oz running, but somewhere, some state he's running, and uh, Cruella de Vil. I mean, the, the comparison is that he was behind some sort of research where they used puppies, and so the idea is, you know, the comparison as Cruella de Vil, where he's actually literally killing puppies. We'll look into that. The last thing I want to talk about, though, is Alex Jones. Okay, this is the guy who has, who was, you know, Sandy Hook murders. With the guy goes in there and he murdered twenty something people, children mostly, and then um, his billion dollar uh, uh, punishment in the civil court. So that's his big lie. And karma has a funny way of coming back and uh, and being um, snarky, doesn't it? A big lie, billion dollar lie. Yeah, that's pretty big. So uh, we'll talk about all that stuff. So we're going to see how this all works out. We got one, two, three, four, five um, subjects to draw uh, cards about. And uh, so we have Queen Charles the Third coronation, and that being on Archie's birthday. Um, what's up with that? You know, that seems pretty coincidental. Is there some karmic lesson that should be learned here? Uh, is Charles getting a chance to maybe right some kind of a wrong, or is it um, some kind of rude, uh, planned situation, which I very much doubt? Um, uh, It'll be interesting to know if he allows the titles of prince and princess to remain with Lilibet. Um, and he may not even address it on that day. But um, so all of that's very interesting. So we'll, we'll draw on that. But before we do too much, let's go ahead and have just a moment of meditation. that done so we'll get right to the questions I have them taped to the in front of me right here so King Charles the third coronation same day as Archie's birthday um, let's do a full Celtic cross no we'll start with the diet cross because that's six cards we may get enough information with that and then um, if need be we'll go on so six cards for Dyadic Cross, King Charles, Coronation, Archie's birthday. What can the cards tell us about all that? Is it planned? Is he going to use the opportunity to do something nice for Archie? Um, we'll see. Okay. And and to take the title of Prince away from the first uh, child, um, I guess the recorded child. Uh, born to the monarchy of a black mother. So it's not insignificant. Uh, the signifier card for this, King Charles, Coronation, Archie's birthday. So this is the nine 
of Pentacles. And the Pentacles are a value or worth. This Nine of Pentacles is a very privileged uh, person. I try not to get too hung up on the sex of the card regarding the sex of the subject sometimes. So, but yeah, so the, the very um, signifier of this reading is this very, very privileged person. Uh, what's that challenged by? Okay, this is challenged by a page of cups. So cups are emotions, compassion, uh, very heartfelt situations, and the page is the very least uh, important of the royal circle. So this very privileged person is challenged by this very insignificant yet um, um, emotional or compassionate or or someone whose situation lends itself to uh, compassion. Uh, but with some sort of a surprise. So could, so this privileged person is challenged by this very weak royal court uh, figure with a compassionate uh, message with a surprise. The base of this then, ah, things come, and this is a major arcana. This is number seven of the major arcana. So a uh, good way through the trip. And But this is uh, the um, chariot. And so this thing's uh, happening graphically. So the bottom of this whole thing, this the... The base of this whole reading is this uh, factor of things moving along, okay, galloping ahead, moving forward. So that's the basis of all this. So this uh, privileged person, uh, compassionate uh, message, uh, things happening. And in the past, then with this 10 of wands, okay, this has been a very difficult bunch of plans or actions or uh, forward moving situations to move along. You can see this guy is really struggling to get this stuff bundled up together and move it forward. Could this be uh, King Charles? In the sky of the situation, well, we have to, it was King Charles and we get a King of Cups. So this says to me that uh, the aim here is to be a very compassionate king. Interesting to see uh, how this works out. Uh, and then the uh, likely outcome of this Diet Cross regarding uh, King Charles III coronation and Archie's birthday is... Ah, now this is interesting. I don't usually read inverted cards because I don't trust my uh, intuition with them. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking around for a cheat sheet I have, trying to remember where I put it uh, regarding inverted cards and I don't see it. So what I'll do is, uh, if this was not inverted, and this is the final outcome of this thing, it would be the hanged man which is looking at things from a different perspective, trying to understand uh, how to get yourself perhaps out of the situation. Um, but it's, it's, it's not the traditional hangman because it is inverted. So I'm going to have to give it a shot. I don't really have set definitions for inverted cards uh, like some folks do, sadly, because I don't like to read them. But anyway, because it did come out as inverted, the hangman inverted. So uh, it's, and it's not always the opposite of what the first meaning of the card is. But um, for me, this card looks like he's got the answer, okay? He looks confident in, in what he's going to do. Um, he's still uh, bound by something. He has a tool uh, in his shirt pocket that you might not have noticed when he was inverted. Um, uh, looks like a knife. And then his foot is still tied to the base of, of, the, of that tree. And the tree really works either way as uh, growing this way, or if you look at it, it works this way as a tree uh, that way. But um, so, what is he bound to? Tree for me represents family. And uh, so he's bound by his foot to family. This could be saying that the titles will stay. I hope that's what it means. Uh, at least it's a heavy consideration. To read again quickly, uh, Prince Charles III and uh, Archie's uh, birthday on the same day. Well, we have a very privileged person. That's Charles, obviously. Challenged by this very weak member of the royal family with a message of compassion and a little bit of a surprise. And the base of the whole thing is how quickly things are starting to move, I think, roll towards that coronation. And in the past, we had the Ten of Wands, which was, you know, this heavy bundle to move along, which is what Charles certainly has. And uh, But in the sky, the best thing you could hope for is to be a king of compassion. And the likely outcome is not looking at things from another perspective, but actually Actually, you know, it, this almost fellow almost looks like it has occurred to him. Ah, it has occurred to him. What's the thing to do? He's tied to family. Um, I think it's leaning uh, in uh, more in favor of letting those two, uh, Archie and a little bit, keep their titles. 
Interesting. Remember, it's not something he has to convey on them. Uh, it's theirs now, according to whatever royal convention was passed. Royal patent, I think it is. Uh, but um, by George I, if I'm not mistaken. So, and you know, that's another little karmic hint there. This whole thing, gr allowing the grandchildren of the monarch to be prince and princess, was put in the place by the first George. So he, I hope he, he reads these signals. Now, Donald Trump, a January 6th select committee, um, and that subpoena. So let's get these cards uh, re-energized. Donald Trump, the January 6th select committee subpoena. What, uh, and again, a dyadic cross, six uh, cards. What can the cards um, tell us about that? Six cards. One, so Donald Trump, that January 6th select committee uh, subpoena. What is this? Can these cards kind of, what kind of story can they tell uh, with that as the uh, byline? So let's see. Donald Trump, January 6th committee, subpoena. Oh my goodness. This is very appropriate. So the signifier of this is secrets being revealed. Look at it however you want. The committee revealed lots of secrets, or there's still secrets to come out. But the very signifier of, of this uh, Donald Trump and, the, and, uh, and that subpoena is having to do with secrets being revealed. That's almost sent as a chill down my spine for that card to come up. Now, the challenge to it uh, is, uh, okay, is a great big uh, cup of compassion, uh, but not necessarily compassion, but emotion. Um, you know, really, uh, uh, s s some things that really people really take to heart. And um, so that's the challenge to all these secrets being revealed is just how overflowing with um, emotion uh, this thing should be. And the base of this, well, that's interesting, is partnerships. And I always take well, this caduceus in here as, as representing kind of an oath that you're going to take. And so that would certainly be under oath. So the whole basis of this thing is this oath that he's being asked to make, which he doesn't do good with that sort of thing. And the past of this is this uh, knight. Yeah, this is a knight of value. So in the past of this, the knight is the fellow in the royal court who's really going to fight for whatever it is he's been given to take in charge of, and that and it's been value here. He's going to fight for this very diminished amount of value, and that's who he's been in the past. Um, sometimes, you know, past is prologue. And then in the sky of this reading for Trump and the uh, subpoena is, oh, I like when the cards repeat. So again, oh yeah, in the sky of this, what to aim for, at least from Trump's point of view, is to be this very privileged, very important, you know, just this very important person, just mm -hmm. lavish. And the likely outcome of Trump and the subpoena is victory. This is very interesting. Trump and the subpoena. You know, the question kind of starts on the foot of Donald Trump. Donald Trump, the January 6th committee, then the second, and the committee subpoena is third. So I tend to look at the cards with that. If I had said, um, started the question of the January 6th committee, and Donald Trump in the subpoena, then I would read this card for the January 6th committee. But you know, we're reading for Donald Trump, and this is victory. Plain and simple. Reading again very quickly. So Donald Trump and the January 6th uh, Select Committee subpoena. Uh, starts out, secrets being revealed. Couldn't be more appropriate. Challenged by this emotional situation, a huge offer of an emotional situation. And it's underscored by this oath that has to be taken. And uh, the past of it is this knight fighting for his diminished value. In the sky is this very privileged person aiming to be just that most privileged person. And then uh, the likely outcome is actually... Uh, victory. And so I think probably he won't, at least on the subpoena, it looks like he won't be uh, talking. I don't think. Now, the next thing we've got here is uh, the English Prime Minister, Liz Trust. She's so awkward. The, she's already made missteps and had to go back on her decision, which was, uh, her year was a huge tax increase or tax savings, I guess, for the, the well off. And somehow, I really don't understand. I'm just parroting what I've heard or read on uh, the, the internet. And then uh, meeting uh, Prince Charles again, and he's, oh dear, you're back. Did he expect that she wouldn't be back? <laughs> he meets with the Prime Minister every week. So six cards for Liz Truss in this uh, awkward situation uh, that she's in. Um, and if we can throw a little bit of Charles in there, that's fine. But he may not be very... Uh, significant to the reading 
actually. It shouldn't be, as a matter of fact. So Liz Truss, awkward, and her missteps. Well, there you go. So it's signified, and again, cards repeating. I like that. It kind of tells me that the cards say, oh, okay, I know how you're going to read this card. So now I know how to use it in a sentence. So for me, these little pictures are almost like hier hieroglyphic uh, messages that you string them together, and then uh, you've got to determine what that sentence means. And so the same words uh, can come up in a different order in a sentence and mean something else. But for this, for me, this one, wands are actions, actions, uh, plans, forward movements, and this is difficult bundle to move forward and that's the signifier and that's exactly what she's got the challenge to it oh my gosh so the challenge to it is this high priestess um you know she has the book of torah in front of her that's knowledge um she you would presume that this person is ah oh, that's the challenge of course this is who she should be and this is who she is okay that's the challenge ah uh, that's interesting. The base of this reading is, well, a great big plan, a great big movement. That's the, the base of this. What's required in this instance is someone to take charge. In the past of this is, ah, decision making. This almost looks like her tor tormented by the decisions she had to make, but she's made good decisions. I mean, my goodness, she reached quite a high level in government for who she is, who she started out with, who from you know leaving her parents' home and making a life of her own, she she came pretty far. My God, she's prime minister. So, but that's in the past. Those decision making uh, questions are in the past. In the sky, of this reading, well, celebrations, and uh, we want to aim for celebration. These are compassionate uh, issues. These are uh, this is a feminine, um, a feminine energy here. So I'm going to say. In the sky of this is, uh, I guess we can think about women's uh, empowerment, perhaps. I don't know. And then, but the final outcome for this, uh, Liz Trump, Liz Truss, awkward missteps, um, Queen of Coins. So she seems to come out of someone with some value. I mean, it almost just watching the news, it seems like she's going to be voted out. But it does take a little while for that to happen. Um, what do they call that? No comp vote and no confidence. And it hasn't been called for yet, I don't believe, as of this recording anyway. Uh, but uh, the likely outcome of this first part of this is a queen of value. Not quite a king of value, which is an appropriate position for her to be in. Uh, Charles is the king, but she's running the government. So queen of value, maybe she's. there's more there than we think. Now the next question... Um, is oh dr oz so if you've been watching and i don't know if it's national but certainly american politics i guess it's pennsylvania i think that dr oz who was a tv doctor okay we had a show i think oprah got him started had a show where you come on a show and he tried to make america better but eventually he was on for what 20 years a long time i don't know if it was 20 years but it was a long time and eventually um People are selling remedies under his name, we hear, and he debunks that. But at the same time, it looks like he's kind of traded on his fame, which, which one of us wouldn't. But uh, the latest development uh, that's come to light, I guess, is that some sort of a research uh, concern he was involved with is doing their work on puppies, which they breed for that purpose. And so they're doomed to die. And um, and it just makes him out as a Cruella de Vil. Remember Cruella from the Disney uh, 101 Dal Dalmatians? So, yeah, I mean, literally being accused of killing puppies. I mean, that's that's not good. And, and looks like, you know, he was behind that. Not for that reason, but, I mean, that was the result. So, Dr. Oz, um, what about that? These, these, this killing the puppies, is he a good guy? I mean, can you work that into six cards? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and then six right there. Okay, Dr. Oz, is he Cruella DeVille? Is he Dr. Oz DeVille? Signifier card. King of value. Okay, so he is uh, this position. That's who he is. He's a valuable uh, in charge guy. The challenge to that. Uh, is the sun. So the sun uh, is a big yes card. Uh, it's also near the end of the trip of the fool on his journey 
uh, at this number 19 of the, of the Major Arcana. And it's a celebratory card. The challenge uh, to him, to his value, is all of the um, spotlight, all of this sun that he's got to shine on himself to get this even more cherished position. He's not happy with being rich. Now he needs to be some kind of also powerful. And maybe that's not a bad thing. I don't know. The base of this reading with this eight of wands, actions, a forward movement, uh, plans. Uh, so the base of this whole thing is all the, um, all the issues uh, that are coming at him. So that's interesting. The uh, past of this, well, the past has been him. This Nine of Cups is sometimes called the greedy merchant. He certainly has been a greedy merchant. Uh, really proud to display all of his emotional trophies right on the shelf behind him. Uh, this is called the wishes fulfilled card sometimes. So, yeah, that's been his past. He has been that person. And it's what built him into this person. And the sky of this is the Seven of Pentacles, value, worth, uh, kind of gardening those things, harvesting those things, and wondering, have you done enough? So the sky on this, have we done enough? And then the likely outcome of, is Dr. Oz uh, Cruella, the puppy killer, is um, it looks like not. It looks like uh, because this uh, high priestess um, well, come, comes out as uh, a very prominent position on this. So perhaps whatever was going on with those puppies, I mean, let's face it, we've been experimenting on animals, experimenting on animals for a very long time. And... Um, and sometimes it just has to be that way. Okay, so Dr. Oz, he's the uh, king of coin. A lot of value. He's challenged by bringing himself right out into the sunshine for everything to be scrutinized. It's underscored by all the issues that that brings with it because he's been into a lot. Good or bad, I don't know. That's to be decided. In the past of this is that greedy merchant, all those emotional trophies that he's uh, displayed and is proud of and had his wishes, uh, his dreams fulfilled. Uh, in the sky, this is wondering is he's done enough regarding all that value. That's very noble. And then the likely outcome is also the high priestess. Um, so that's a big yes card. So I think it was not an ignoble uh, situation that he's been involved in. You know, this is not, these are not my personal opinions. I'm just reading the cards. And this could be right, this could be wrong. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm saying at the time. I'm just talking as it comes to me. And uh, I think that's the value of what this is. Now, Alex Jones. So he's this guy, I guess, did he start out with a podcast? And he's on television and a bunch of networks. He's a very far right-wing extremist kind of guy. The um, Sandy Hook, I think it was, school massacre. Was it at 22 people were killed? The majority of the children. Children. You know, six, seven. Um, and uh, the civil uh, litigation is determined, uh, in this case, almost a billion dollar uh, settlement for eight of the families. So that's not all of the 22. There was another settlement somewhere for, I think, 45 million for maybe one family in another jurisdiction. Um, so Alex Jones. Let's just do six cards to see what the cards can say about him. I just think he's a deplorable person. So one, two three. I, I can't be, believe that people believe uh, what they're saying. And I almost equally can't believe that they would, be, knowing these things are so hurtful and wrong, and still do it uh, for the millions of dollars that were coming. Let's face it. The signifier. This uh, puts him up as a knight fighting for his, um, his actions. Oh, fighting for his actions, wants or actions, plans, forward movement. So he's a knight fighting for his actions. Interesting. That's appropriate. It's challenged by what? The, okay, the queen, a higher calling to those actions. Okay, so this knight fighting for the actions that he has uh, employed, 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 uh, is challenged by a higher calling to those actions, to his actions. It's just a shame. He could have made it equally become equally famous and rich by bringing his notoriety to a good cause. Uh, the basis of this then, again, repeated cards, love it. And so these are things are happening finally at a rapid pace. I mean, they haven't always been moving along, but yeah, now things are clipping along. And the past of this has been strength. Hmm. I don't know how to think of it. What comes to mind is his strength in, in, in you know, maintaining that lie. So the past of this has been having to um, uh, hold tight 
okay, trying to play this dangerous game of, of saying I was right or I wasn't so wrong. And the, the sky of this, the best that will come of this is a broken heart. I mean, there's no, that's happened. It will continue to happen. There's no other outcome for this, no matter, no amount of money, punishment. And then the final outcome, wow. So she's turned up in how, all of the readings, perhaps? I have to go back and look at it. So, yeah. So the past this is, uh, or the final outcome of this is that you know, the right thing will prevail. That's all there is to it. He's a knight fighting for his actions. He certainly was. Uh, it's challenged by being, those actions should be called to a higher purpose as queen. Uh, everything is really moving along now. In the past, he has been so strong, almost like that lion. If you watch some of his podcasts, he's, he's vicious. Uh, and exudes that strength. Uh, the sky of this, all of it is going to be a broken heart. All of this. There's no other way for this to end than the way it already has ended. It started out with a broken heart, as a matter of fact, the killing of all those children. And then the final outcome is that justice prevails. So that's been the reading. Hope you liked it. Who could think, who would have ever thought, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, well, 20 years, certainly, that these kind of things that I talked about today would be in our public culture. It's amazing. Oh, well. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is another Los Carabillo, the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. And so these are super gilded is what's the deal with these. All in the right weight uh, iconography, kind of. And a typical uh, instruction booklet that's, you know, not that great and a little bit difficult to read. But the... Um, What's good here is in the cards. They're kind of handy to use, so that's all good. And look at how beautiful they are. I don't know if it shows up as well on the camera as it does in person, but when you use these in person, I mean, they are really stunning, and someone feels like they're getting their money's worth. So we we'll mix them up like this so that we kind of get our, our uh, energy into the cards, and sometimes it's good to let the querent um, you know, get their hands on them just for a minute. And then people get more involved. You know, once you've touched it, it's uh, it's more appealing. So here we go. We'll get this going. <laughs> well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go. So stop on by. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.